there. It's me, Nancy Drew. You're just in time for my latest mystery. Treasure in the Royal Tower. Choose your... Dear George, so much for my Wisconsin ski vacation. I arrived here at Wickford Castle last night, just before a blizzard swept in. The mountain is completely shut down, and the surrounding roads are closed. I think I'm one of the few guests who made it to the castle at all. The place is huge and old, and slightly creepy under the circumstances. You should hear this wind. What's more, the owner, Christy Lane, my father's friend, is away on business. I tried to ask the caretaker, Dexter Egan, how I could contact her, but he said he didn't know. Doesn't that seem odd? I couldn't help feeling like there was something he wasn't telling me. All this makes me a little nervous, but I'm determined to enjoy myself. After all, this is a vacation, right? I have big plans to explore the castle. That Ezra Wickford, the original owner, must have been quite a character to have built such an extraordinary place. It's filled with strange, dead-end corridors, for one thing. And I noticed one of the towers is totally different from the other ones. Of course, I'll have to save some time to meet Jacques Brunet, the French ski instructor. Tell Bess she'll be the first to know if he's half as gorgeous in person as he looks on his website. So, George, I guess things never quite go according to plan. But at least this time, the culprit is just a snowstorm. Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. Now all I need is a mailbox. like the radiator is broken. I'd better take my key with me.
dead end. Hello, Miss Drew. Did you get squared away upstairs? All square. I just need a stamp to send this letter, and then I'll be off to explore the castle. Well, I can take your letter, but the mail's not going anywhere for a while. It's snowing like there's no tomorrow out there. So explore all you want. Take the grand tour. But forget about the library. It's off limits. Off limits? Someone vandalized our historic library. Really turned the place upside down. The owner, Miss Lane, She's gonna be pretty upset. When could this have happened? I have no idea. I straightened up in there before check-in yesterday and everything was fine. Now it looks like a bomb went off. Books everywhere and somebody hacked a big hole in one of the walls. I locked the place up and called the police, but who knows when they'll be able to get here. Wow, that's too bad. Well, can you recommend any other points of interest for me to check out? Depends on what you're interested in. Our special this week is the crazy old bird upstairs. Just follow your ears. The peck, peck, peck of that typewriter will lead you right to her. Crazy old bird? What do you mean? Are you talking about one of the other guests? Well, this Professor Hotchkiss just called me in a terrible flap, saying our room's been robbed. I went up there, but she wouldn't open the door to talk about it. Wouldn't even tell me what was missing. So what's she want me to do about it? What strange behavior. I'm curious. I wonder if she might open the door to talk to me. Well, Hotchkiss has a pair of ski boots in the basement. The Frenchman's been working on them for her, but he won't deliver them. Says he's a ski instructor, not a bellhop. I hate to ask this, but if you could grab those boots and bring them up to her, it might smooth her feathers. Sure would smooth mine. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Bye, kiddo. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Jacques Brunet. So, what brings you to beautiful Wisconsin? Bonjour. Je m'appelle Nancy Drew. I'm here on vacation. What's your excuse? Uh, my excuse? Well, this is an awfully long way from the French Alps. Did you come to Wisconsin for the cheese? I am here for Isabelle, mon petit chou. She's an American studying at the university in Madison and I've asked her to marry me. That is excuse enough to be in Wisconsin, n'est-ce pas? And besides, I am not the first French work of art to end up here. Work of art? What are you talking about? I am speaking of the Queen's Tower, of course. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. Didn't you notice it when you drove in? Yes, I think Christy Lane mentioned it to me once. What can you tell me about it? A Marie Antoinette used to visit this tower when she was Queen of France. Until she lost her head in the revolution, that is. 
A pretty girl should not hear about such ugly things. But tell me, uh, how will you spend your time here, Nancy? Oh, I'm just going to wander around and become an expert on this castle. Uh, I should warn you, Dexter is very protective of this place. He does not take kindly to people snooping around where they should not. Thanks for the tip, but I think Dexter and I are going to get along just fine. Get along just fine, you say? <laughs> ah, a woman who knows her own powers of persuasion. Elle est dangereuse, non? Ciao! Ah, Nancy, comment ça va? I need to bring Professor Hotchkiss her boots. Do you have them? Uh, yes, I fixed her boots. Uh, but you should be relaxing by the fire, sipping cocoa, Nancy. Not running errands for Dexter. Tell me about these boxes you're making. When I am not skiing, I need some other way to express myself. So voila! I make these hot boxes, for keeping secrets safe. I'm sure you have many secrets, Nancy. Do you know much about the tower that's closed off? I heard the original owner imported it from France. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. And Marie Antoinette used to visit this tower when she was Queen of France. Until she lost her head in the revolution, that is. I'll talk to you later. Allez, bye bye! The combination is 517, but it's not working. I've hit the wall. Yes, hello! Is that Jacques with my boots? Professor Hotchkiss? My name is Nancy. I'm sorry to hear that your room was robbed. Could I ask you a couple of questions about the incident? Beep! Professor Hotchkiss is not available at this time. Thank you and goodbye. Beep! That must be my boots at last! I have your boots, but do you have a minute to talk with me? Oh, good. Uh, boots, fine. Uh, thank you, thank you. Everything is fine. Uh, just leave the boots at the door, please. Hmm. Oh, and it seems I'm out of change. I'll just have to tip you the next time, Mandy. It's Nancy, and I'm happy to leave the boots. But if you're not too busy, Professor, I'd just like to introduce myself properly and ask you a couple of questions. Questions, yes, yes, and proper introduction sounds lovely, but not now, maybe later.
can I help you? I think there's something wrong with my radiator. It hisses, and there's a clanging noise, too. Could you check it out for me? Sorry about that inconvenience, but you're just gonna have to sit tight for a while. I'm the only one on duty while the owner's away, and around here it seems like even if it ain't broke, it still needs fixing. Last time I checked, there were only 24 hours in a day. Hotchkiss called to report that she got her boots, but now I'm told that the light is out in the back stairwell. Could you check the circuit breaker in the basement and make sure it's working? Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. Jacques must be gone. Yes? I don't want to pester you, Mr. Egan, but <clears throat> the radiator... Thanks for dealing with the circuit breaker. Okay, we're really making progress here, kid. So, you go up to Hotchkiss's room and see what she wants for dinner. She's not answering her phone. No problem, boss. Virginia Woolf never endured such interruptions. Who is it? It's Nancy again. Dexter needs to know what you want for dinner. Oh, hard to think of food candy when I'm riding the raging rapids of my theory. Oh, right now, I have plenty of pre-packaged energy globules to keep me going. But tell Baxter that I am developing a powerful craving for couscous. Yes, couscous for dinner would be splendid. I'll have a nice tip for you next time, Fanny.
Yes. The professor says she has a hankering for, um, couscous. Couscous? Never heard of it. Tell her to order something off the menu. Okay. See you, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Is that my couscous already? Sorry, Professor, but there's no couscous in the house. You'll need to choose something from the hotel menu. Well, I don't have a menu. At least not from this hotel. Oh, oh be a doll and, and fetch me one, will you? Ta-ta. Did you get the menu? Sure did. How about opening the door so I can give it to you? Oh, you're a sneaky one. Just slip it under the door, please. Nice and easy. No funny stuff. Uh, oh, baby back ribs, yes. Oh, chili cheese dog. A uh, 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 fried bologna sandwich. Uh, I'm not usually much of a meat eater, but uh, very well. Fifty drumsticks, please. Chicken, that is. Cluck, cluck. Sure. Fifty drumsticks. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Rock and roll, dear. Can I help you? The professor has changed her order. Seems she's developed an appetite for chicken drumsticks. Fifty of them. Okay then, drumsticks we got. Oops, but I guess Jock better take that bag of chicken legs out of the freezer. Will you tell him? And then take the rest of the day off, kid. Your radiator's as good as fixed. Okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Lisa. Did you hear what happened? Someone broke into the library and vandalized it. Dexter locked it up. He's saying the culprit must be one of us in the castle. Can you believe it? Why would it be one of us? Apparently, the only guests who made it here before the blizzard set in are you, me, and Professor Hotchkiss. Uh, and then there's the on-staff suspects, Dexter, our friendly desk clerk, and Jacques Brunet, ski instructor extraordinaire. What do you know about Professor Hodgkiss? Oh my gosh, wait till you hear this. Hotchkiss is this nutty old woman who's always typing and talking to herself in her room. I was walking past her door earlier, and I heard her screaming that her room had been robbed. You said she's a professor. Do you know what she teaches? I'm really not sure. She just kept wailing, my theory, my theory. I think she teaches history, or maybe a foreign language. I thought I heard a couple of French words pop out of her mouth. But don't quote me on that either. I only barely passed Spanish in high school. Habla espanol? Hardly. I'm just a humble photojournalist covering weird old mansions in the Midwest. And this place is one of the weirdest. Did you know Ezra Wickford, the original owner, shut himself away in here for like 50 years? I wonder why he was so antisocial. Creepy, right? I mean, did we stumble onto the set of As the Castle Turns or what? Well, you probably want to get settled. I wonder what we're going to do with ourselves while we're all cooped up in this place. What do you know about Jacques Brunet? Didn't you watch the last Winter Olympics? He's France's big cheese of skiing. He holds the record for the 500 meter slalom, but he totally choked at the games. I guess he's washed up now, but at least his looks haven't gone down the tubes. This place sounds like a soap opera. Oh my gosh, wait till you hear this. Hotchkiss is this nutty old woman who's always typing and talking to herself in her room. I was walking past her door earlier, and I heard her screaming that her room had been robbed. Wow, did she say what was stolen? Not that I could hear. She just kept wailing, my theory, my theory. I think she teaches history, or maybe a foreign language. I thought I heard a couple of French words pop out of her mouth, 
But don't quote me on that either. I only barely passed Spanish in high school. Do you have a theory about all this? Hardly. I'm just a humble photojournalist covering weird old mansions in the Midwest. And this place is one of the weirdest. Did you know Ezra Wickford, the original owner, shut himself away in here for like 50 years? You must know a great deal about this place. Not really, but I sure want to get into that tower that came from France. It'd be great for my story. Too bad Wickford sealed it off. Maybe it's his ghost making those creepy noises at night. What noises? Oh, just your average bump in the night sound effects. It's probably just Dexter trying to spook up the hotel for the publicity. I mean, did we stumble onto the set of As the Castle Turns or what? Well, you probably want to get settled. I wonder what we're going to do with ourselves while we're all cooped up in this place. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. Ah, Nancy, como ça va? Dexter needs you to defrost that big bag of chicken legs. Oh, la la la, what does he think I am? A sous chef? Dexter told me the combination to my locker, number 310, is 517. I tried it, but the locker won't open. Hmm, Dexter must be confused, because I think that is the combination for number 311. Uh, try 311. Lisa told me you were in the Olympics. What was that like? Disappointing, frustrating, humiliating. Oh, what happened? It was the worst day of my life. To fall flat on my face with my family, my country, and the rest of the world watching. I'll talk to you later. Ale bye bye. Ah, Nancy, como ça va? I'll talk to you later. Ciao! It's stuck. Did you see I fix your radiator? I was in the elevator and it got stuck between floors. I had to climb out the top and I just barely made it up to the floor above. 
You think you'll be able to fix it? Well, I doubt it's broken. I'll check the power switch in the basement. Glad you're okay. But don't go climbing around the elevator shaft anymore. It's dangerous in there. Okay. See you, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Ah, Nancy, como se va? I'll talk to you later. Dale, bye bye. There's something down there. you could have done was left me a hint. <sighs> I don't have time to clean this up.
Can I help you? Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Alrighty then. Glad you're here. At the moment, my theory is rising like a magnificent souffle. I need to collect a few more ingredients, if you will, but it's a delicate situation. If I leave my room even for a moment, I fear the souffle will come crashing down in a heap. You're cooking a souffle in there? Oh, don't take me too literally, dear. What I need is some information about the castle. Hard numbers. I've come to the conclusion that you are an enterprising and faithful soul. Therefore, I have decided to entrust you with this important mission. Who knows? If you succeed, I might whisk you away from the hotel business to be my personal research assistant. Well, Professor Hodgkiss, I'm not actually in the hotel business, but I'd love to help. Marvelous! Here's what I need to know. What is the model number on the elevator? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. Thank you. 
Yes. Did you find the information I asked you for? Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget. Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. Eureka! If there's one thing I like in a young person, it's ingenuity. Now, I've got work to do. Time to stir the cauldron and stoke the fire. But if you'd like to talk, I'll be holding office hours in the lobby between 3 and 6 a.m. Meet me then. Nancy, dear, welcome to the witching hour. Isn't it marvelous to be up and about when others are sound asleep? I find my brain waves are at their most powerful during this time. Yes, I happen to do some of my best work in the middle of the night, too. So, tell me, Professor, what is this theory you're working on? Well, you probably know by now that I'm a scholar of French history. <laughs> my specialty is Marie Antoinette. Oh, poor Marie the most misunderstood queen of the 18th century. Marie used to visit the very tower that now belongs to this castle. I'm convinced that this place holds evidence that will forever change the way the world views Marie. But the walls have ears, so I'd rather not say any more right now. Oh, if you're really interested, why don't you go up to my room and have a look around yourself? You've been such a great help to me, almost like an apprentice. <laughs> oh. I've always wanted an apprentice. Oh, that's all right, Professor. I don't want to invade your privacy. I insist! Your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every banana in its path. Oh, how can I stand in the way? Here's my extra pass key. I get back to work at 6 a.m. sharp, so just make sure you vacate the premises by 5.59 and put things back where you find them. It's all scientifically organized in there. Do you know anything about a tiara that was given to Marie Antoinette? The infamous tiara, of course! Oh, people thought Marie had this extravagant piece commissioned for herself, and they hated her for it. But really, it was her husband, King Louis XVI, who had it made for her birthday. Oh, she didn't want it refused to wear it, and then, a few months before the revolution broke out, the tiara disappeared. Was it ever found? It was never found. There were rumors that she had it destroyed, but no one has ever been able to prove this. What did you mean when you said Marie Antoinette was misunderstood? Everyone thought Marie did nothing but spend France's money on jewels and fancy soap for herself, while her people were starving. History books have upheld the myth that she was just a spoiled and heartless brat, but I don't believe it. Why not? I believe that she's been the victim of vicious rumors and lazy historians for too long, and that if the real story could be told, people would realize that Marie Antoinette was actually a good woman who wanted to help her people, but didn't know how. See you soon. Right-o!
<sighs> it's like the North Pole out there. Elevators in the way. Nancy, what are you doing here? Don't you think I should be asking you that question? I can explain, Nancy. But please, don't tell anyone that you found me here. If I get sent back to France, my fiancé will give up on me. And I will have let down my family again. How can you expect me to keep quiet while you go around destroying the castle? If you're willing to saw through this gate, then you must be the one who wrecked the library too. Nancy. I had nothing to do with what happened in the library. I swear, the tower holds a valuable French historical document. If I can find it and return it to France, perhaps I can make up for my failure at the Olympics. What kind of document? The tower first belonged to the Chateau Rochemont in France. When Ezra Wickfield bought the tower, my great-grandfather was the master carpenter in charge of dismantling it and preparing it for shipment. One day, when he was working alone, he found a secret compartment in one of the walls. Then what happened? Inside, he found an old journal with a royal crest on the cover and a medallion with a strange blue stone in it. But he heard other carpenters coming, so he hid the medallion in his pocket and sealed the journal back in the compartment. Before he could get back to study the journal and return the medallion, the tower was dismantled and shipped to America. 
He never learned who the journal belonged to or what it said. Why didn't your great-grandfather tell anyone about his discovery? He thought if he told his story, Ezra Wickford might get angry, accuse him of interfering with the project, and try to ruin his name as a carpenter. So he kept quiet. But he told you this story? I was his only great-grandson. On his deathbed, he gave me the medallion and told me the whole story. He begged me to come here to Wisconsin to find the journal and return it to France. What did he think the journal contained that was so important? The journal bore a royal seal. It must have belonged to Marie Antoinette because she used to visit the tower during the revolution. So perhaps it contains her confessions, or perhaps it contains proof of her innocence. Either way, the contents of that journal could change French history forever. I just don't see how you can think that journal will still be up there after all these years. I know it's possible that someone found the secret compartment when the tower was being put back together, but I have to check anyway. I just have to know. Nancy, do you think you could help me? Let me show you this medallion, and maybe you'll be able to tell me what it's for. I might be willing to help you, but you have to tell Christy everything. I'm sure she'll understand. And then you won't have to sneak around in the middle of the night, haunting the castle with that screeching hacksaw. Okay, Nancy, I see your point. I will explain everything to Christy Lane as soon as possible. Now will you help me? I think this medallion will interest you. And maybe you'll have some idea what it's for. It's in my locker. Uh, will you go get it while I take care of something? The combination is 2665. I'll meet you in the locker room in a minute. Okay, Jacques. I am intrigued. I'll see you downstairs. Oh, you are the best, Nancy. That's what they tell me. Headache headquarters. Nancy here. Nancy, it's Jacques. Uh, what happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Jacques. But I'm afraid your medallion is gone. Oh, la la. You can't be serious. I'm afraid I am serious. I have no idea what happened to it. This is too much. Oh, la la. Unbelievable. System. Please press zero to retrieve messages. To first message. Yeah, Mr. This is Dexter at the front desk. Can you come down when you're feeling better? I need to talk to you for a minute. Thanks. To go to the next message, press two. To leave the system. Second message. Nancy, this is your mentor speaking. Things are looking uncommonly out of sorts in here. I just hope I haven't had another intruder. Please remember that passkey I gave you is not for sharing. To leave the system, please press 3. Thank you. Goodbye.
Thanks for coming down. I've been wanting to talk to you. How's your head? Did you slip or what? Well, let's just say someone must be trying to tell me to get a little more rest on this vacation. Anyway, I'm planning on making a speedy recovery. It's just that when I found you out cold in the basement and hauled you back to your room, I noticed all this red dirt on your shoes. I'm just curious where it came from. Mr. Egan, I confess, I found my way into the corridor that leads to the Queen's Tower. As you probably know, the dirt in that tunnel is very red. I hope you won't consider this trespassing. Nope. If you must know, I'm impressed. Ezra Wickford set that secret door up so nobody would be able to find it. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with getting into that tower. Ezra told me that if I could get through the secret door, he'd take me up to see the Queen's Tower. Finally, I got into the tunnel, and when I came out with that red dirt all over me, he laughed. He was actually proud of me. That's an amazing story, Mr. Egan. I'm glad you're not angry. I guess I'm just as curious as you once were. I'd say you earned the right to check out the tower for yourself, but you gotta get through that gate, right? There's an old skeleton key in the maintenance shed. Now that the storm's passed, you can go out and get it. But be careful. It's still dead cold out there. Where should I look for the key when I get to the shed? Don't get lazy on me, Nancy. You don't expect me to tell you everything, do you? You're right, Mr. Egan. I don't know what came over me. You're a trooper. Hi there, how's it going? So tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. There was a little mix-up with the lockers, and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Well, I was kind of confused. I was just trying to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. Does your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. I'm dying to find a way into that tower. Where do they usually hide the secret entrances in weird old Midwestern mansions? <laughs> I guess I should know, shouldn't I? Too bad most of the places I've covered aren't any weirder than imitation butter. I wish you'd hurry up and find it, though, so we can check it out. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy. It's locked.
It's locked.
Hi there, how's it going? I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. Hey there, Nancy. So, did you grow up around here? You could say that. Did you know the original owner, Ezra Wickford, when he lived here? You could say that. What was he like? They call it the past for a reason, okay? Because it's over. So, do you know if Ezra Wickford had a place where he liked to go and think? Some place he thought of as a refuge? There was a private area of the garden. Yeah. The entrance was hidden, so no one could bother him there. Do you think I could go check it out? Forget about it. There's nothing out there but dead weeds and crumbling statues. I don't want to press my luck with you, but I sure would like to see Ezra's private garden. Could you tell me how to find it? It's nothing but wasteland out there. If you're bent on tromping around in the cold, go left when you get outside, away from the shed. Look for a wrought iron gate. You'll figure out the rest. You've been holding out on me, Mr. Egan. I read in an old issue of the Daily Telegraph that you grew up here, right in this castle. All right. I did live here for a few years, once upon a time. I was an orphan until Ezra Wickford came along and adopted me. But I left the castle when I was 16, and I never saw him again. That's the story, all right? But why did you leave? Some things can't be explained, kid. It was a long time ago, and nothing can change it now. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. All righty, then. Hi there, how's it going? I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. Hello, my fellow night owl. Or perhaps I should say hoot hoot. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, did you find anything of interest in my room? Actually, I haven't had a chance to visit your room yet, Professor. Hmm, I see. Well, suit yourself. But please don't expect me to entertain you with idle chit chat. All right then, bye bye. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Hotch kiss to Earth. Come in, Earth. Oh, okay. I, I think I think we're rolling. <clears throat> now let's get a look at these hallways. So rich in detail.
You'd never know this place was built in 1920. It's all so 18th C. Oh, and there's Marie. I feel so close to her, just being here. It's as if her spirit is in the air, sweet as the smell of fried chicken. <gasps> Yes, dear? I saw a letter on your desk from your friend, the Baroness von Hanseldorf. And I'm just wondering, did the medallion she gave you have a blue stone in it by any chance? Heavens no! Where did you hear such a thing? My medallion had a green stone in it. Anything else would be a mere imposter, a flaming faker, do you hear me? What do you think of Lisa Ostrom? That Leslie, yes, a oh, real dynamo, but... Uh... Oh, I told Chester that I would not require any maid service during my stay. I don't know why she didn't get the message. I found something that I think you'll be very interested in. It seems to be some kind of journal. I think it was written by Marie Antoinette herself. What? Let me see that. <gasps> this is it. I've been trying to track this down for 15 years. Where on earth did you find it? Well, it's a long story, but I happened to find a way into the Queen's Tower where I happened to find a secret compartment. I think this must be what the Vandal was after. Nancy, I must warn you. I'll wrestle you for this if I have to, and it won't be pretty. I'm on a mission of my own, Professor, so we're going to have to make a deal. I place the journal in your hands, you translate it for me. Does that sound fair? Absolutely. I'll get to work on it right away. I'll have the translation ready in my room for you this time tomorrow. Until then, I mustn't be disturbed.
It's locked. Hey there, Nancy. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Bye, kiddo. Glad you came down to talk. Get this. I saw Dexter walking out to the maintenance shack with this, like, green ornament thing in his hand. He's up to something, right? Maybe you should check it out. Thanks for the tip, Lisa. I think I will. Wanna come along? Thanks, Nancy, but you're the brainiac. I'll just guard this comfy chair and wait for your report. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy. Hello there, dead end. My name's Nancy Drew. Uh, it's freezing out here. I got out. If I don't get inside soon, I'll freeze to death. What the? What's going on out here? Is that you, Nancy? <sighs> Come inside. It's freezing out here. What kind of a stunt was that, Missy? I was freezing. That stunt was my version of an SOS. Well then, what can I say except good thinking? Hey there, Nancy. Why are those holes in the crest on the floor of the tower room? I can help you. But we shouldn't talk about it now. Not here. Call me later. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. Nancy, I heard you got locked out. You could have frozen to death. So, what was Dexter hiding out there? Good thing I'm not the type to let frostbite interfere with my love of trespassing, huh? Too bad I didn't find anything. Huh, I thought for sure I was on to something. I still think Dexter's shady. I'd keep an eye on him if I were you. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy.
Oh, oh, what's this? It appears to be some kind of peephole. But what, pray, does it peep upon? Shall I peep? <laughs> la la, I do believe I'll peep. <gasps> the beauty, the colors. So this is what Helga told me to look for. Where's my medallion? <gasps> it fits! Note to self, high five Team Hotchkiss! And what's this? A message? Eureka! It says the diamond! This one goes nowhere. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've translated the entire journal. It's fabulous. And as an added bonus, it includes Marie's official decoder, something no one else has ever found before. Can you translate this for me? Le diamant de misère dans mon journal. Now, where the heck have I seen that phrase before? Well, well anyway, it means the diamond of misery in my journal. What does l'espoir à ceux qui cherchent mean? Hmm, let's see. Well, Espoir is hope, and chercher is to search. Hope to those who search. Can you tell me what this means in English? La solution se trouve dedans. Well, trouver is to find, and solution is just like it sounds. Solution. The solution is found within. See you soon. Goodbye. This is Dexter. It's Nancy, hoping you can help me now. But why the sudden hush-hush? Do you smell a rat? The information you request is highly sensitive, young lady. That's top secret in case you were wondering. Now, I've been around the block a few times, and if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you can't be too careful. If you want answers, we do it my way, see? Sure thing, Mr. Egan. I just hope the phone's not bugged. All right, all right. Just give me the question. What's up with those holes in the crest on the floor of the tower room? I've always wondered that myself. Seems like something's missing from the crest. Like different objects should fit in those holes, but I don't know what. Anything else? 
I think that's it for now. Thanks, Dexter. Hello there! Oh, it's so exciting about your discovery. I wonder what it will lead to. See you soon. Goodbye. I think I see what the symbols in the stained glass mean now. Let's see. Purple rose, hold diamond, key of queen. But where have I seen a purple rose? And what's a diamond key? It's locked. It's locked.
a diamond. Woo! Will you look at that sparkly rock? And me without my sunglasses. Hi, Lisa. How did you get in here? I followed you, of course. Turns out a nosy goody two-shoes detective is good to have around after all. Now, why don't you toss me that big honking diamond so I can blow this popsicle stand and never set foot in Lamo, Wisconsin again? Lisa, you must be kidding me. This diamond belongs in a museum in France. <laughs> yeah? Well, I belong in the lap of luxury, and that diamond's gonna get me there. Hasn't anybody ever told you to mind your own business? Oh, many times. Well, maybe this time you'll learn. My eyes! Don't worry. My spicy devil villain Venom won't last for long. But I'm afraid by the time you get your eyes back, you'll have missed my grand exit. <coughs> so you're the one who trapped me in the elevator. Ooh, you are a smarty pants. But let's not forget about your little frostbite incident. I'm the rotten friend who locked you outside too, you know. Just trying to keep you on your toes, Nancy. Didn't want you to get soft on your vacation. Are you the one who caught me on the head in the locker room? Ouch. <laughs> I bet that hurt. But I had to get the medallion somehow, didn't I? I hope we can still be friends. Why did you leave Jacques' medallion at Hotchkiss's room? <coughs> and Hotchkiss's medallion out in the shed. To spread suspicion around, of course. You know, to play with your mind. Plus, I was at a dead end. I got the two messages from the stained glass window, but then what? I knew you would figure it out, so I decided to put the medallions in your hands and let you lead the way. Why did you have to vandalize that beautiful library? Just a little translation mix-up. When I read the message from Hotchkiss's medallion, I thought it meant Diamond of Misery in the library. Whoops, <laughs> guess I went a little overboard looking for it in there. Anyway, enough with the questions, Nancy. You'll just have to read the rest in the papers. I've got to stop her. Ah! Help! Get me out of here! It stinks down here. It's all moldy. Darn you, Nancy Drew. You're the worst friend a diamond thief could ever have. Dear Dad, to think I almost became friends with a diamond thief. Everyone at Wickford Castle is resting easier now that Marie Antoinette's journal and her famous diamond are safe and sound. The journal, the diamond, and the medallions are all going to be featured in a new Marie Antoinette exhibit in Paris. And it looks like everyone will be rewarded. <laughs> Except Lisa, of course. First, she missed her plane to Rio, and now she's going to be charged with attempted grand theft. Professor Hotchkiss is thrilled because the French government has granted her permission to publish Marie's journal in the U.S. before it gets returned to France. This ought to help prove her theory about Marie's character once and for all. Thanks to Jacques and his great-grandfather's efforts to find the journal, the Brunet name is being celebrated all over France. In the meantime, Jacques and Isabel have eloped. It's so romantic. I showed Dexter the poem that Ezra Wickford wrote him, and he was relieved to know that his old pop didn't carry any hard feelings to his grave. All the talk shows want Dexter to tell his story on national television, but he keeps turning them down. I guess he doesn't want to be famous or infamous. But when Christy Lane called and asked Dexter to be her business partner, he accepted. With her business sense and Dexter's expert knowledge of the castle, I think they'll make a great team. So, you know what they say, Dad. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. It's never too late to change history. Me, I'm determined to go out and enjoy this snow before some other case comes up. See you soon. Love, Nancy.